Hi, good evening. My name is Toca Trevino, founder of the Proyecto. Together with the MAS de Barrientos, Mexican American Cultural Center, we're thrilled to have Sonia de los Santos with us for this Spanglish series. Sonia de los Santos was born with a smile on her face, and that's what her mom says at least, in Monterrey, Mexico. And in 2007, she started touring the world, both singing in both English and Spanish, playing guitar and jarana. Um, she's been lighting up the stages with Grammy award-winning group Dan Saints and Friends. In 2015, she released her first solo family music album titled Mi Viaje, de Nuevo León to New York Island. Um, that was actually the Parents' Choice Foundation Gold Award winner. Um, she's also bringing a collection of songs that reflect her experiences growing up in Mexico, moving to another country, learning about other cultures, and in the process, feeling closer to her own heritage. Thank you, Sonia, so much for doing with this with us. Um, I'm going to ask you about your life and more of your accolades. You, your resume is so impressive, uh, impressive, and I'm, I'm just so happy to have you here tonight with us. Thank you so much for having me, Coca. Uh, it's great to, to be part of, uh, of this program. Yeah. Yeah. And me puedes platicar un poquito más de ti? Yo tengo la fortuna enorme de conocerte desde Monterrey. Nos conocimos el día que conocí a mi ahora esposo, el mismo día en el mismo evento en las luchas, si es que soy bastante honesta. Así es que es súper es lindo saber de ti y saber toda tu trayectoria y todo el esfuerzo que le has puesto y todo lo lejos que has llegado y que sigues, todos los cosas que sigues conquistando. Nos platicas un poquito de, de Monterrey, de cómo... Este, empieza tu carrera en, de música? Sí, claro, bueno, uff, larga historia. <risa> ¿Por dónde empezamos? Eso fue hace muchos años. Eh, pues sí, yo crecí cantando, crecí cantando en mi casa, crecí cantando con mi mamá, eh, no profesionalmente de niña ni nada, pero pues sí como con una afición grande por la música, grande por la voz, eh, por, por la expresión artística en, en varias formas. Y, y bueno, pues de, eh, en la preparatoria de la universidad hice algo de teatro musical, estuve en el TEC de Monterrey, eh, para la gente que conoce Monterrey, estuve en la prepa TEC Santa Catarina, y después <risa> hice eh, la licenciatura en Ciencias de la Comunicación en el TEC de Monterrey, el Campus Monterrey, eh, y bueno, fui parte de las actividades de difusión cultural, eh, pues desde la preparatoria y toda la universidad, ocho años. Durante esos años, pues tomé muchas clases de canto, algo de actuación, y, y bueno, como continué con eso, y al graduarme de la universidad eh, decidí venir a Nueva York a... Pues a, ahora sí que a perseguir mis sueños, no sabía muy bien exactamente lo que era, yo sabía que quería seguir cantando, sabía que me gustaba el teatro, eh, y bueno, después de, eh, de estar acá y de hacer algunas audiciones, eh, terminé eh, siendo parte del grupo Dan Saints and Friends, que lo mencionaste hace un rato, eh, un grupo de música pues como de folk americano eh, para familias y para niños, ellos se acababan de ganar un Grammy, y, y bueno, pues tuve la fortuna de viajar con ellos por, por muchas partes de Estados Unidos e incluso de otros países eh, por años. Y a raíz de eso fue que nació eh, como la idea de crear mi propio proyecto de música para familias y para niños, pero basado en, pues, en mis experiencias eh, creciendo en México, en mi experiencia como mujer migrante en Estados Unidos, eh, y bueno, más basado como en el folclore latinoamericano, eh, con, con una onda más bilingüe, eh, y pues aquí estoy, aquí sigo. <risa> Está increíble, porque yo me acuerdo, y, y yo te conocí cantando, y, este, y, y siempre va, era... Igual está mal que lo, te lo diga, pero eh, te tiene. Este, era todo mundo pues cantando bares, eventos y cosas así, pero entrabas tú y era de que, wow, no, like, she's for real, she's professional, like, you, you could tell a part and, and you could tell, and also the charisma and how you serious you were taking it. And, and it was, like, it, it was very lucky for the audience just to see, like, this huge pro singer, serenading us and, and yeah I, and it was 
very obvious like oh this is this stage is too little for her and when when alfredo told me that that you were going to new york i was like whoa like yes that would make sense but also the guts that you have to have to move to like pretty much the hardest place that you could move to mm -hmm. like i always felt like when when we decided to move to austin it was kind of a calculated decision of like music being close to home people welcoming like the uh, the spanish and and it, it was a very calculated thing but like sure like we thought about la chicago new york and we're like Ugh, maybe that's too hard <laughs> let's let's tell the, uh, start little but you went all the way out there can you can you tell us a bit about this cultural shock mainly i guess but also about where where did you grab all that strength and brain power to make this super bold move uh well first of all thank you for the kind words about what you remember about my singing <laughs> back then it was very different from what i sing now as as you can remember because yes, yes like i sing for kids now and families i mean i sing for grown-ups too but uh, but mainly at that point that you remember i sang in bars and restaurants everywhere, you know, uh, anywhere that they would uh, let me sing, pretty much. <laughs> and I remember at that time, I was uh, saving money to come here. Um, and Alfredo was one of the people that supported me on that endeavor. He's like, yeah, you can do it. Tu puedes, amiga, sí, sí. Entonces, eh, you know, I remember those times, or that time, um, with, uh, con mucho cariño, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was like you say, uh, I don't know how I did it, but like, <laughs> I know, I know that like that I wanted to come to, uh, live in New York for a long time, even before I started college. So it wasn't a plan just like, yeah, I'm going to go now. Not really. I really wanted to come here after high school. Uh, I brought it up to my parents and they were like, nope you're not like you're 18 like you you can't you can't go move to new york by yourself um but they said you know what like when you're done with college here uh we'll pay for college here <laughs> when you're when you when you know if afterwards you want to leave you can you can go and do it so pretty much i was like waiting the whole time not that i wasn't like doing anything else i was like trying to learn as much as possible and taking in as much as information as I could from, you know, all the projects that I was involved in. But it was a very calculated thing too, even though it seemed like, all right, she graduated and she's leaving. <laughs> no, I, I planned it for, for a long time. And uh, it, took a, it took a while, but, um, but I'm happy I, um, I made the decision. And now it's, uh, it seems like, you know, thinking about 15 years ago, because that's how long it's been it feels like a whole other life right now yeah. uh, than what it was when, when I decided to move. So yes, cultural shock. Yes, it was really cold in that first December. And, uh, but um, I feel like I've, I have adapted pretty well. I have found, uh, I have found a family of friends here really. And, um, and, you know, and I try to stay connected to home as much as possible. Yeah, that makes sense. And so I'm curious, like your parents, were, were they super supportive of, of the singing part, like from the get, I mean, if you weren't singing since you were a child, I'm, I'm guessing, yes. But like, were they, were they on board with the doing this professionally or no? They were, um, they always supported me singing. They, you know, since I was very young, they, they encouraged me to keep learning. They supported me with singing lessons, like throughout uh, high school and college um, so they I think they, they they knew that I loved to sing they weren't sure that I was going to actually pursue it professionally yeah. and they said we'll support you when you know when you're done with college if you want to study uh, in New York but then by that time you know my parents had already paid for my university and you know money wasn't that good at that time and they were like you know what we really support you uh, emotionally, but you kind of on your own. <laughs> so, uh, so just so you know, I came here with money for like two months, maybe. Um, so it was a big, big, uh, 
just a challenge to, to yeah we did the same the beginning <laughs> yeah we, we did the same i i've like i've been wanting to come for a while and i had it in my plans but things were going back and forth but then alfredo had like this huge car accident and it was like total so like the the insurance gave him like some money and i was like well this is That's it. it. So we came with a backpack and about a thousand dollars. Like it was mm -hmm. insane. And we're like, just whatever, like we just should do this. And it was after the hurricane. I, I don't know if you remember, were you there for the hurricane Alex? I believe it was. I was I don't already know. here. Yeah, I was already here. Yeah. Well, it, that was happening. And so like, and it was a bunch of just, it was, like a very little version of our personal 2020 kind of like everything was just falling apart and we're like yeah it's time let's just do this thing and we moved and we're like i mean cross your fingers and let's yeah. see what happens but but yeah it's yeah it's always cool to hear about people that are just making it happen like we have enough passion we have enough time and i guess being younger also helps in saying like eff it like that's it just does. So yeah like if you were to ask me now like would you move to another country by yourself with like nothing um i i don't know if i would again you know <laughs> probably would but it just seems so much harder right now after like having gone through that in my early 20s then you know it's just <laughs> now it's a totally different ball game I feel like and well and like now 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 it's you know obviously like the world is falling apart so yeah yeah but like you know if you would have asked me like eight months ago maybe I would still <laughs> say yeah that would be hard I don't know where I would go um this is home now for now yeah <laughs> yeah and can you tell me like a little bit more of um so you were with this amazing band and you were touring and then like you wanted to do something of yourself. Like how, can can you guide me through that process? Like, como, como te moviste de un lado a otro? Si, uh, de nuevo, siendo joven, estando, de que, et, no es como que tenías toda una banda de que apoyándote. Eran, eran decisiones de Sonia y tipo, co, ¿cómo navegaste todas esas decisiones y, este, y esos cambios? Bueno, pues eh, fue, fue, fue interesante porque fue una como a realization, ¿no? Como, bueno, o sea, ya le di la vuelta con este grupo y es muy bonito y voy a continuar con ellos, pero también tenía la inquietud de crear algo propio, algo que tuviera una, que sintiese que, que tuviera, que que podía tener, llegar a tener en algún momento un impacto bien grande en la comunidad eh, latina o hispana en Estados Unidos. Eh, sentí que si empezaba como a contar algo de mi, de mi historia, de pronto alguien la, le, le podía inspirar, eh, a, alguien se podía tal vez sentir identificado, identificada con, eh, con algo de mi historia. Y así empecé el primer disco, el de, eh, de Nuevo León, To the New York Island. Eh, escribí, escribí varias canciones para ese álbum y, y tomé algo como del repertorio que a mí me gustaba, que creía que como que se, eh, eh, me podía identificar con él. Y nada, empecé a, empecé a llamar a músicos que conocía, a decir, hey, pues estoy grabando un disco para familias, eh, es un proyecto nuevo, ¿qué tal te gustaría grabar? No tenía mucho dinero, eh, apliqué para un grant de una institución eh, eh, de, de cultura mexicana aquí en Nueva York y me dieron, me dieron por ahí unos Super. miles y con eso empecé y después pues no me alcanzaba como quiera este, y la segunda parte la, la, la pude financiar gracias a un tamo que me di así literal para terminar el disco y lo fui pagando con, con los primeros conciertos que tuve porque ese wow. disco pues fue como una carta de presentación, fue como hacer oficial el proyecto, decir, bueno, ahora quiero hacer esto. En un principio la gente me decía, pero ya te vas a dedicar a la música para niños, o sea, ¿qué onda? ¿Ya no vas a cantar otras cosas? Y yo, pues sí, no sé, pero quiero hacer esto, o sea, en realidad me están haciendo, estoy viendo. Al final de los shows con esta otra banda, eh, venían familias eh, latinas y me decían, Sonia, qué, qué rico escucharte cantar en español, qué, qué gran... Eh, 
ejemplo para nuestros niños, hemos querido que, que pues se animen a hablar español, porque muchos niños que crecen de este lado no quieren hablar español, porque aprenden inglés en el colegio y, y tal vez se sienten un poquito eh, self-conscious del idioma sí. y no quieren como decir algo que está mal, etcétera. Pero bueno, por medio de la música nos podemos animar a aprender un segundo idioma, eh, o un tercero, o un cuarto, o que sea, mientras más hablemos mejor. Y, y bueno, eso, eso fue una inspiración muy grande para mí. Y pues fue así que decidí eh, empezar con el primer disco. Después del primer disco, pues armé mi banda, me empezaron a salir conciertos. Entonces ahora sí empecé a llamar. Oye, bueno, pues tengo un show, ¿cómo ves? Y, 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 y fue creciendo, fue creciendo, fue creciendo. Eh, y, y bueno, ya después eh, hice el segundo álbum. Ya, ya más con el sonido de una banda que había empezado a turear y todo. Y, y bueno, nos nominaron para el Grammy Latino eh, el año pasado. Y, Increíble. Y, y pues fue muy bonito, ¿no? O sea, por allá andaba yo en el en Grammy. Eh, y bueno, eso, eso ha servido para abrir un poco más de puertas y, y pues para seguir creando. Claro, porque es, es, es tan... Cuando uno toma estas decisiones de eso se trata, es buscar oportunidad y trabajar y darle fuerte y darle duro. Y que a ver, eh, me queda claro que, que no, o sea, el trabajar en, en cualquier ámbito y, y ser bueno en, en lo que haces y no, vaya, no necesitas tener este, un trabajo extraordinario o nada, nada más el propósito de emigrar, de, de crear una nueva vida, este, vaya, si te avientas a hacerlo, probablemente te vaya a ir bien, porque, porque venimos con ganas y venimos con mucho entusiasmo y, y con una meta, y, y para bien, no sé, estoy diciendo cosas muy vagas y random, pero nada más me, me, me emociona mucho eso de que, de, de que tenías un propósito, viniste de que a ver cómo le hago y salen las cosas y junto elementos y, y aquí está el resultado de mucho trabajo. Tipo, no un resultado de mi familia tiene lana y por eso de que puedo conseguir esta gente este tiempo de estudio tipo, nadie te dio nada y eso se me hace increíble y se me hace como el ejemplo más, más lindo y más fuerte y más común, de, de nuevo, en diferentes ámbitos probablemente, pero, pero es el, al menos de, de nuestra cultura de, de tomar un, un paso tan arriesgado este, por un bien y por una, una vida, una ilusión y, y todo, y qué, qué rico y qué feliz este, que estés logrando tanto. Este, a ver, también viniste a ACL, que igual y para, para ustedes de Nueva York no, no significa tanto, pero aquí en, en Austin es a big deal, <ríe> que es de que no, vengas a ACL. Sí es, sí es. Entonces, de que sí, y, y también nosotros tuvimos la oportunidad de compartir eso, eso contigo y ver la adoración de las familias y los niños y el baile y todo, y, y también que tienes uh, un, un equipo bien diverso este, en tu banda, este, platícanos, platícanos de eso, de, de andar tureando en festivales y, y en, en, en lugares que a lo mejor no relacionas con, con familia. Sí, bueno, no, claro, ACL aquí y allá y en todos lados es, o sea, es súper bonito. Me acuerdo cuando salió el anuncio que iba a estar pues, muchísimos amigos, o sea, no, o sea, wow, o sea, ya la hiciste. <risa> Fue muy bonito porque... Eh, de alguna manera como legitimiza un poquito el proyecto cuando sobre todo tus amigos tienen esa referencia de, oh wow, es un super festival. Yo acá en Nueva York he tocado en, en, en teatros súper reconocidos y digamos que a un nivel de performing arts world, bien sí. reconocidos, pero pues mucha gente no los conoce porque, porque pues es un festival como mainstream, o sea, tienen, claro. es, es como otro tipo de de caché, ¿no? Decirlo. Sí, pues es otra Muchos audiencia. Festivales. Sí, es otra audiencia. Entonces, pues bueno, hice ACL, que ahí estuvieron con nosotros. Gracias. No, eh, no. También tocamos en Lola Palusa el año wow. pasado, me parece. Sí, hace un año. 
el verano pasado estuvimos en Lollapalooza, también, pues imagínate estar como en el mismo póster que tantos artistas como, pues tan grandes, ¿no? Y con tanto reconocimiento, pues es una experiencia muy linda, claro, pues es, estuvimos en el stage para niños, es, es, es bien diferente, tú sabes, que el resto del festival, que las pantallas gigantes, pero también es lindo eh, ver y reconocer que estos festivales grandes le dan un espacio a las familias, eh, porque se requiere, porque se requiere tener, eh, digamos, eh, eventos y todo que incluyan de alguna manera eh, a los niños y que, y, que, y que tengan como un lugar seguro también en donde estar, eh, y se sientan incluidos en un festival grande. Entonces, pues ha sido muy, muy bonito. Eh, highlights, ¿qué te puedo decir de, de lugares a donde hemos ido? Eh, me ha encantado estar en California, por ejemplo. Hemos ido muchas veces a California. Es, hemos estado por allá en el Getty Museum, que también es, es muy importante. Acá en Nueva York, pues, Carnegie Hall, Lincoln Center. Wow. Eh, the New Victory Theater, que es un teatro off-Broadway en la en 42nd Street. Ahí hicimos un show el año pasado muy bonito con invitados especiales. Y pues de, del país, pues hemos estado en muchos, muchos estados. Eh, eh, hemos estado en Miami, hemos estado en Chicago, hemos estado en Kansas, en Arizona, en Nuevo México, en Las Vegas, en, en muchos lados. Y, y, y es muy lindo ir y representar, traer un poquito de nuestra cultura latinoamericana con una banda también que es, eh, yendo a, a lo que hablabas del equipo, soy bien afortunada de tener como un, una banda que, que, que apoya el proyecto, que sabe mucho, que en realidad aporta, apoya y aporta. Eh, y, y bueno, soy, soy, soy muy afortunada. No, qué bien, pero pues es lo mismo, de que tienes buena ética profesional, de que sabes a quién rodearte, Tienes haciendo esto profesionalmente por muchos años, entonces estoy segura que tienes un ojo increíble para, para saber a quién invitar a tus no cosas. No creas, a veces me falla. <risa> no lo creo. Me falla el radar. Oye, no, pero qué interesante. Y cuéntame de que es, esos, eh, esos de Carnegie y Lincoln Center y todos esos lugares de que vas con tu show y este, o, o ha sido para festivales, platícame eso, porque qué increíble, cuánta gente no muere por estar en, en ese escenario, ¿Qué, qué logro tan increíble. Sí, pues sí, cuando lo dices, me acuerdo de lo, de lo grande que es, es claro, claro. Eh, mira, eh, tanto para Carney Hall como para Lincoln Center, eh, pues ellos tienen como diferentes series, ¿no? Y hay programación como, pues, normal, como para adultos, pero también hay como unas series eh, para familias. Entonces, es en realidad en las cosas que he, he participado en eventos para, para familias, eh, en diferentes eh, lugares, por ejemplo, el Lincoln Center, en el Dave Rubenstein Atrium, he estado un par de veces, he estado en, en, en una de las librerías que está también, es parte del Lincoln Center, con Lincoln Center Education, que es todo otro okay. programa de educación en donde traen a los niños de las escuelas al teatro a ver los Super. shows. Entonces, pues he sido, he tenido la fortuna de ser uno de los músicos que ha, que ha tocado en estas series. Eh, Carne y Hall, pues también eh, participé con mi banda en un concierto en un eh, festival de, de Spring, Spring uh -huh. Music, no me acuerdo exactamente cómo se llamaba, pero también pues un sábado en la mañana para familias en uno de los escenarios de Carnegie. Eh, y, wow. y bueno, de hecho, he continuado, a raíz de que hice ese concierto, después me invitaron a participar en uno de sus proyectos de, como con enfoque social que se llama The Lullaby Project. Yo no sé si uh -huh. te he hablado de eso, pero bueno, es, es otra cosa. Pero bueno, también <risa> trabajo con ellos eh, eh, regularmente. Qué increíble y qué, qué buenos contactos y qué bueno, qué, qué fresa. <risa> ¿Qué, qué, tus contactos, ya, yeah, no, la verdad es... es Sí, eso, no cualquiera, de que, y, y hacerlo con tu música, con tu gente, híjole, todavía más impresionante, qué, qué feliz. No, este, hoy, gracias. No, pues, a ti. <laughs> Tell me more about this, um, your, your um, general mu music, like, you're, you're telling us that you work with uh, 
mainly for, for families. And these projects are, are geared towards, towards that. But tell me about the music. Like, what are you composing? Like, what are the instruments? That, what, what is it that you bring to the table? Yeah, so the music I've been creating for, for the last years, it's pretty much uh, Latin American folk music, white folk, when I say white, uh, you know, from different countries, not only Mexico where I'm from. Um, but since we have people in the band from different countries, like you met Martin, who's from Colombia. So all of a sudden we, we have a lot more cumbia sounds, uh, you know, cumbia is big in Monterrey too. Yes, yes. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, more of the Colombian uh, roots, like cumbia roots uh, sound with more of the traditional instruments. So what kind of intr instruments do, we, do I play or people play in the band? Um, I play regular acoustic guitar, you can see it here. Uh, and I also play, you know, play electric guitar and I play jarana, like the Mexican yeah. jarana from Veracruz. Um, and uh, for example, the bass in our, in our band is a Leona. It's an acoustic bass. Uh, I think you got to see Sinue yeah. playing the bass. Sinue is from oh, Mexico God, City. Amazing. Um, and, uh, and not only he plays that acoustic ba bass, but he makes those instruments. He makes jaranas and he makes the bass and, um, and he's a wonderful luthier and, and friend. Um, so, uh, Martin plays drums and then I have, for example, George Sainz playing, who's from Laredo, Texas, he's Mexican American. He plays accordion, like accordion, mm -hmm. like Norteño accordion, and he plays trombone. Uh, and uh, and Elena, my friend Elena Moon Park, uh, who's who's from the United States, States plays violin and trumpet and sings, and everyone sings. Uh, and Martin plays drums. He also plays uh, the Colombian gaita flutes. He plays Ooh. clarinet. Uh, so depending on the show, we have a different uh, configuration. Um, but we we try to create original music, music for the whole family. We we like to. Uh, tell stories that are um, universal in some way, like st stories of migration, stories of, uh, you know, loving one another, uh, making peace with our brothers and sisters, um, tolerance. Um, and, uh, and we use some metaphors to talk about these important themes. <laughs> uh, one of the biggest uh, met metaphors that we've used is the, you know, the golondrina, the swallow mm -hmm. bird. Okay. Um, and uh, that's La Golondrina is one of the first songs, the first song I wrote for this project. And it's, you know, talking about a migrant bird. And I wrote it thinking about, uh, my, you know, my own experience um, migrating here. Um, and, you know, there's many examples like that. But that's pretty much like what we try to do. Um, and, uh, and the music is, you know, it's, yes, it, it's, it's, you know, its main audience is children and their families, but, you know, it's music that adults can listen to and, uh, and, it, and, and it's okay, you know, <laughs> a lot of parents are like, I listen without my children, I love your songs. So um, the idea is that there's a little bit for everyone in the, you know, in the songs that, that we write and that we perform. Yeah, I love it. Um, the, the times that I got to see you, it's, and it's so rich and, and culturally diverse. And also it's very intriguing seeing those instruments. I love it. Like and when you talked about the Leona or Jarana, like I was like, oh my God, what is that? It looks so like it's familiar, but also different. And the sounds are, are very unique. And, and I love that you brought also that like kind of the, yeah, surprise element. Visually, it's very, very beautiful band and also like, yeah, you move and it's it's just easy to listen to and and to enjoy. It's yeah, dude. If you can keep the kids paying attention, I think like you've made the hardest thing possible. Like it's not, it's not always running. easy. But I try. I smile a lot and uh, and we do hand motions and I uh, I do I really do try to connect with them and like you know look at them in the eye and. Uh, Children know when you're when you're for real or not. Um, yeah, but so so far so good, and I'm loving it. Awesome. And so, would you think that you were continue somewhat in this line, like bringing more? Like, are are you? Well, first of all, before I go that part, like, what are you doing in this? 
times of weirdness like are you still producing music are you like how how are you adapting to being a musician indoors uh by doing this <laughs> uh so yeah you know it's it's been pretty challenging times uh, i had a lot of shows lined up this year as many musicians did um and uh you know the first few weeks i really didn't do anything i was like in shock yeah. uh, and then uh i have a friend who said uh would you play a little show like four songs or something in an interview for me? like kind of like what we're doing but with songs and i was like what like <laughs> internet like at home what? <laughs> And I was like, you know what? Yes, I'm going to try. And I did. And, uh, and I'm glad. Um, and I'm glad he invited me and my friend Kabir. So um, I did that. And then I was like, you know what? I, I'm just going to move some stuff around and I'm going to start, uh, you know, making some videos. So I started a, a series of videos um, here from home. It's called En Casa con Sonia. Um, and it's, you know, where you see me sitting down is here and I... What I do is, you know, tell my stories about my songs and play the songs uh, and uh, just, be, you know, be myself and put them out in the world. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been going pretty well. Uh, I had plans to start recording a new album uh, in March and April, so that stopped. Yeah. Uh, but I'm very happy to say that we resumed the sessions and we started uh, three weeks ago, I think. Oh my God, how exciting! So, there is there is going to be some music coming out soon. Awesome! And tell me, um, when when or where can people see your uh, in La Casa con Sonia? Desde casa. Uh, en Casa con Sonia. Okay. Yes, um, on my YouTube channel, uh, En Casa con Sonia. Uh, you know, Sonia de los Santos. You you find me there. Also, it's also available on Instagram, on IGTV, uh, and my Facebook uh, page, uh, my Facebook fan page. Um, you can find them in my website too, Sonia de los Santos Music dot com. Cool. And do you um, upload constantly, or is it a series that's already done? Like, how how do you have? I upload. I upload. Um, I have no schedule. That's, okay. <laughs> that's, um, I upload uh, whenever I can depending okay. on what I'm doing. Um, I have been doing some virtual concerts too. Some are public and some are uh, private for schools and libraries, uh, you know, different people that have asked me to do that. So depending on my workload in the week, yeah. I would record an episode or two and, uh, and then I, I post them uh, regularly, uh, but there's no schedule. There's no rules. Yeah. So if you know, <laughs> keep them coming, <laughs> I'm yeah, guessing. There's, I think there's 19, no, there's maybe 19 or 20 of them online. So you can go watch them all in one afternoon. Uh, they're uh, between three minutes and six minutes, depending on the song and what I talk about. Sometimes I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, it has a little bit of, uh, of, you know, of the stories behind the songs. It also like featuring songwriters that I admire uh, and I just learned some songs and, and share them, you know, uh, colleagues that I that I look up to. And um, so it's a good way to find some songs too that can be enjoyed by, by the whole family. Well, that's awesome. Okay, and on the recording of, of the new album, I, to what I, I was asking, like, are you following the same line, like family, folk? Uh, is there anything like new that you're um, trying to experiment with? Um, it's in the same, definitely in the same line of the first two albums that this would be our third. Um, wow. And uh, uh, no, I mean, the sounds, I would say the instrumentation, it's, um, it's similar. Um, <laughs> you know, we're a little bit maybe like, you know, it's percussion heavy. It's a lot of congas yeah. and awesome. uh, the drums and uh, like very exciting uh, track that we're actually producing now. Um, I, I might, something that I might do uh, is record in a language that I have never done it. Um, mm. I want to sing in Portuguese. Nice. <laughs> uh, so maybe there's going to be, so let's see how, how we do it. Uh, yeah, so we'll maybe, cross our but, fingers for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but, um, I, I, I've been trying to represent as much as I can from the Latin American uh, continent. And um, 
and Brazil is one country that we haven't uh, touched on. So um, yeah, that's that might be coming up too. That's so exciting. And also like, it's not a completely different language. I feel like you should be able to pull it up pretty good. Like just listen to a, some awesome bossa and get inspired in the rhythm and I'm sure you'll pull it up. Yeah, that's so cool that, that you try to involve um, all of Latin America. Like, tell, tell me how do you grab from that? Like, do you just listen to a lot of world music? Or also, I guess New York is a good place to find people from all over the world. Like, but how, how do you grab inspiration and how, how do you um, maybe uh, get some um, bits and pieces of other culture? I think New York helps a lot. Like being here, definitely, we have friends from, you know, all all over. Um, so there's a lot of inspiration there. Uh, and, and also, you know, just by, you know, checking out what, you know, what's there, listening to music. I do listen to some world music, not in any way, any sort of expert, but I know what I like when I hear it. And, um, yeah. and I try to, um, to, to grab from, you know, from, from the things I like, you know, the essence of, of some things and, and also like, you know, just translate them into how my interpretation of those things are, um, you know, how we can do a voice or how we can uh, sing something. Uh, yeah, like just, I'm, I'm always like, you know, ears and eyes and everything open, you know, so so we can learn as much as possible and say, hey, you know, that's 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 interesting. I wonder if kids, you know, five years old would be like, oh, that's that's what is that instrument? Like there's there's always uh, there's always a track in the album that it has some kind of mysterious uh, <laughs> instrument that that, you know, they're like, "Ooh, what's that? And maybe it's a kena flute, you know, from Peru. Or uh, maybe it's a uh, you know a saw, musical saw or something. So I try to at least have one or two instruments that are a little bit more mysterious uh, in the in their music. Yeah, no, and it and it shows definitely because and and yeah, that's how you keep it interesting and paying attention and just looking at this. Like it's not a regular like four piece band that you're familiar with the, the and there's sound. nothing wrong with that yeah oh no 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 perfect like, but, yeah 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 but i feel like um you know also like there's a lot of it you know there's a lot of of groups that that have a very particular more like a rock and, rock and roll sound um and uh, and it just excites me to be able to to present a, you know a little bit more underground sounds but still, you know, being, uh, being, uh, of, you know, that they could be of interest to, you know, five-year-old, you know, that it, they're not so foreign, but, you know, presented in, in a simple way that they could be um, trying to find the right word. <laughs> but you know no. what I mean. Yes, I know. Sí, que sea como digerible para una audiencia, para una audiencia, you know, de niños. Sí, y, y al, algo que se me hace bien importante es que aparte, al hacer todo eso, no solo es interesante, pero estás, igual y rescatar no es la palabra indicada, pero estás trayendo a luz o estás dando un, un enfoque a, a cosas que son súper tradicionales en Latinoamérica o en diferentes culturas y que, y que estás sacando lo rico que es y poniéndolo en una, en una audiencia algo inesperada y le estás dando longevidad introduciéndolo a otras generaciones y eso es, es un trabajo increíble y muy muy necesario porque cuánto cuánto perdemos en cultura este a cómo van pasando las generaciones y a cómo vamos haciendo todo este más digital y, y más este pues sí mainstream entonces sí se me hace bien importante que, que te tomes el tiempo de, de rescatar eso o, o cosas que probablemente si a ti te llama la atención de que a todos los demás nos va a llamar la atención igual y no es tan foráneo ni nada pero pero sí hace un servicio a la comunidad muy bueno sí esa es, esa es la idea en realidad eso es como lo que lo que lo que tuve en mente desde un principio no bueno qué puedo traer yo a la mesa que sea diferente no a, a lo que ya hay a lo que ya existe y, y en realidad, pues, 
había cosas que estaban claras y también otras como que en el camino he ido aprendiendo, he ido encontrando esos elementos que se pueden incorporar en, en esta música. Eh, también pues aprendiendo de la misma audiencia, viendo cómo, cómo responden a cierto tipo de sonidos, qué es lo que buscan, ¿no? Eh, cómo me cuentan las mamás y los papás, ay mira, escuchamos tu disco cocinando y nos encanta la canción de tu versión de chocolate, por ejemplo, que es como, tú sabes, tradicional. Eh, pero bueno, les gustó la versión que yo hice y, 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 y pues la hacen. O, o a mis hijas les encanta eh, la golondrina porque desde que te escucharon hablar de la historia con tu abuelita y, y, y todo, o sea, eh, pues las conmovió y ahora preguntan. Entonces, bueno, eh, ahí es donde yo voy viendo. Ah, mira, o sea, esto en realidad tiene un impacto. Esto puede ser mejor también o, o, o hay que ir por aquí o a lo mejor esto no, no, no se tradujo como yo, yo quise ya a la hora de, de, de llegar a, a las familias. Entonces, todos los días se aprende y pues aquí claro. estamos aprendiendo. Sí, y aparte, con, con esto que estamos hablando de los, de los uh, instrumentos y, y tradiciones, el storytelling, qué importante es, like how, yeah, how, how good music is to, to show storytelling and to put it in a framework that it's more accessible and that people can open up to, like a story that maybe if you put a post or write a novel or something, like that won't be as, easy to catch and embrace and understand as music and and that's a huge tool on your on your music right yeah i mean storytelling yes it's uh in encouraging kids to to write their own stories you know some some of the episodes that from the series has uh some activities and i encourage you know kids to write their own stories or imagine their perfect joyful scene for example or like what's your Uh, you know, with the song Alegría, like I tell the story of, you know, it brings me joy when I remember my mom telling me uh, that I was born with a smile on my face, because that's mm -hmm. literally what she said, what she says, and she remembers that. Um, but I asked them, you know, that's my happy memory. What's yours? Do you have one? And they're like, oh, well, oh, yes, uh, when my dad brought uh, our puppy home and I saw oh. him for the first time, for example, you know, and I'm like, that's a good one, you know, like on rainy days, you know, you should have that here and here so you can remember and um, and and it'll make you feel better because we all need to, something to hold on to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, especially happens. right now. Yes. No, my God, no. Yeah, this is this is so so cool and and what a service you're doing to to everyone. I'm I'm so happy that that we get to hear from you and that children are listening and paying attention and learning and loving like in such a good uh just nice loving message. It's uh, I'm very very grateful for your work and and your uh, how how hard you've been making it happen and, and working and traveling and just sharing a good, um, yeah, good spirits and, and a good message that of unity and, and growth and, and personal, like growth. I'm repeating all the words, but you know, like I'm no, just, no, no, it, no. It's just, it's just so nice to be able to know you and, and again, like seeing your, uh, your, your journey and, and seeing all the good things that you're doing with it. Um, what, what are your next plans after you're done with your new album and like, tell me about some of the other places you want to visit or like of where you want to play. T tell me your dreams. Um, what is what they say? Like, Like, uh, and my mind has been set on releasing new music. Um, like, so I'm working very hard on these songs that we're putting together. Um, so that's my main focus right now. Uh, I, you know, I would, I would love to get back on tour when, when it's safe to do so, when it's safe to play for other people um, in person. Because uh, I do play for other people here, like in this way. But um, 
but I miss so much, you know, seeing an audience, a live audience. It's something yeah. that's, you know, when, when the light hits your eyelids and, <laughs> and you're at a theater and, um, and, you know, there's something very magical about that. And I discovered that I wanted to keep singing, um, my whole life uh, when I was doing theater younger. So it just, it brings me back to that. And I, you know, I hope we can do it and, if, and, and you know, we'll adapt somehow. I know we will. Um, so yeah, I don't know. What's my dream for that? Um, to be able to, to, you know, play for music. I mean, play for, for people. Sí, sí Alfredo también se está volviendo loco. Yeah, he's like, you don't get it, like just the energy of the people. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I'm like, no, I want my cocoon. And he's like, no, you don't get it. Todos somos diferentes, right? Yeah. You know, it's, um, so some people feel a lot more, a lot safer now. They're like, oh, great. Now we're all home. I don't have to like kiss everyone and like shake hands with everyone. And, yeah. you know, I've, I'm, I've been a hugger my whole life. I'm like, see, sí, muy muy cariñosa, muy, tú sabes, entonces, it's hard, you know, kids hug me or hug my legs yes. at the end of the show, oh, all sweet. the time, so, right now, like, doing Zoom concerts, I get to see some faces, and we do the hand motions, uh, but then, you know, I shut my computer down, and, you know, I'm here, and I'm alone, so, <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. It's no, hard. no, I, yeah, I get it, and, and, I guess the good thing about all of this and being super positive, I guess, is that we're all discovering so much about ourselves. Like this, this time, like oh, at least for me and, and people that I've talked to, like we've been having time to sit with ourselves and our thoughts and in a very uh, confined space so that it, yeah, you're faced with, yourself or yeah so it, it and I think it's it's an important practice to have like every once in a while just like okay what's going on what are these feelings and what are these thoughts and why are they valid or not I mean not valid every thought is valid but are they worthy of my time and my space and and everything so yeah I hope yeah I hope we all can get some of that thoughtfulness and intention and, and just like you were saying like this is part of of the vision that you had and and you made you you grabbed every every clue and every element into making it possible like i guess like we can all do that with our personal lives or at work or whatever like what is your true intention and where what is the vision that you have for yourself and how do you actually accomplish it yeah, this is a and, and, very random thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I agree. But um, you know, I also um, you know, I had this thought of like sometimes we really don't know where we're going. You know, it's like a vi the vision is not clear, and that's okay too. Yeah. Um, you know, some people are like, yeah, since I was five, I knew I wanted to be a doctor, and like that's what I did, and now I'm a doctor, and I'm happy, and that's great. But you know, some people switch careers in their 40s and I feel like that's okay too sure um, so I mean and especially in times like this uh it's you know everything is so uh up in the air <laughs> so, <laughs> the least. so um yeah it's uh I feel like a lot of it it's revealed also in like the journey and that that's part of it and that becomes somehow part of your vision like what you you've lived in your journey and it for sure it's true for me because like my first journey coming here it was like the the inspiration or like you know the 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 first like uh like the founding stone you know of uh the foundation of of, of of the vision of this project um and um and so and so and also you know all the experiences i've had over this year's and the people that I've met and the circumstances around us. And now this circumstance is shaping my art too. Yeah. So um, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least, yes. Yes, it's very interesting. Well, thank you so much for, for taking the time to talk to me. I'm, I'm just so 
so happy to get to touch base with you and see how wonderful you're doing and how beautiful everything you do is. And, and I'm grateful for, for peeps here in, in Austin to hear from you and for the Mexican American Cultural Center to, to be able to show some of what you do. So thank you, the best wishes in the world. We, I'm, I know we'll, we'll keep seeing you everywhere and, and I can only hope that those generations that are growing up with you take over. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, thanks so much for having me and uh, hello to everyone in Austin. Saludos a todos por allá, eh, a la comunidad bilingüe. Yeah. You, you know so well how to talk to to them and uh yes keep 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 doing this and it's it's great to hear the stories of of people who are who are doing different things in the world and uh, i hope to see you guys soon and take care you too thank you keep so me much posted about the proyecto <laughs> all the things yes we'll keep you posted and we'll keep in touch so whenever we can see each other again we'll We'll collaborate. We'll find something to do. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Gracias a todos. Buenas noches. And thank you to the MIS Barrientos Mexican American Cultural Center for hosting. Have a good night.